a sudden opportunity for third-class medical reform in the Senate. And the FAA boss says he really does support change. Sharing a warbird for more than 30 years, airplane partnerships really can work. And Pirates of the Back 40, they will be live this week from AirVenture 2015, begins in just a moment. From your first skyward glance, the dream of flight compelled you. And from your first glimpse of a Cirrus, you realized that dream had a name. Cirrus Aircraft. Go where you've never been before. Hello everyone and welcome to the second show of our special coverage from AirVenture in Oshkosh. I'm Melissa Rudinger. And I'm Tom Haynes. Some big news on third class medical reform. As we record this show, the Senate is considering an amendment to the highway bill. That amendment mirrors the language in the pilot's bill of rights too, which would eliminate the need for a third class medical certificate for many private pilots. The amendment is sponsored by Senators Joe Manchin of West Virginia and John Bozeman of Arkansas. What I'm really happy about over anything else today. 50 co-sponsors in the Senate already support this move. That's a really big start. Very unusual to have this kind of support even before it goes up for a vote, but we've got a long way to go. That road includes actually getting the amendment attached to the highway bill and then passing the bill. And that needs to be done before July 31st. Not an easy thing to do, but as Mark said, the support of 50 senators is a big deal. And FAA Administrator Michael Huerta walked a careful line on third-class medical reform here at Oshkosh. The FAA supports some form of reform. They sent proposed changes to the medical rules up the chain of command to the Department of Transportation, and there the rules have languished. The pilot perspective is not the only perspective on this issue. We are dealing with a range of perspectives as we talk to our colleagues in the Department of Transportation and our colleagues across the administration in the White House, the Office of uh, Management and Budget, all of whom need to be on board with us making a proposal. Huerta says people who are not pilots think aviation is just different. We're all aviators. And so now when that enters the larger public debate, this is, uh, we just have to acknowledge it, is a really hard thing for some people to get their head around. And I, these are conversations I have with very, very smart people where we can talk about data, we can talk about mitigations, we can talk about uh, everything that we're putting in place, and it will end with one of those people saying, aviation is just different. We've done our work in the agency, I told you that last year. We've been in an extensive series of discussions with our uh, colleagues across the administration for a year now as we have been uh, sharing data, sharing information, and having discussions. And at the same time, though, as I said in my remarks, we are engaged in discussions with Congress as well. As we look at this, uh, you know, this larger question of this is a public policy issue, I think there are a lot of people that are struggling with it. But it is something you know, that we continue to uh, try to educate people that we're working very diligently on. And I think that uh, the GA community should do the same. And of course, we at AOPA are, and you should too. Let your senators know that you support their support of third-class medical reform. AOPA President Mark Baker now has a new namesake. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University named a 172 trainer after him. The university is naming several airplanes after aviation leaders as part of its Name a Plane initiative. The program helps raise money for scholarships and financial aid. There will be a Mark Baker 172 at each Embry-Riddle campus. And one aircraft that's already famous there are some 10,000 airplanes at AirVenture this year. One of them may be familiar to you. AOPA sweepstakes winner Steve Logren brought his daughters to AirVenture in the AOPA sweepstakes debonair. I love the airplane and love its handling characteristics. Um, I can fly around with the family just fine. We can load it up to gross and we've got plenty of room and space. Steve has already taken the debonair cross country and is continuing work on his instrument rating. And it's really great to see him using the airplane that way. The family seems to really enjoy it. Yeah, we put a lot of work and love into those airplanes, and it's nice to see somebody really appreciate it. Right, right, and that was a really special one, too. A lot of people talk about forming a club or a partnership to share costs on an airplane, but some people struggle to make it work. Well, not the two gentlemen you're about to meet. These guys have shared their Warbird and their, the expenses and the resulting adventures for more than three decades. 
our Paul Moses talked to them about how they've done it. Right at 10, Russ. Oshkosh 2015 is really just the latest in a long list of adventures for Ohioans Orlin Wickman and Russ Borselman. Automatic run-up when you set your brakes, pass the thumbs up up the line. They and their wingmen and women have been practicing for days and are being briefed for formation flight during the warbird portion of the air show. Russ and Orlin met at the local airport. Then, not long after, they bought their T-34, the foundation of a friendship that has lasted more than three decades. How? There are people that aren't married that long. Well, we've been very fortunate. You know, 30 some years, and we've never had a mean word between us. We agree on what needs to be done as far as maintenance, and it just works. The one thing is a common interest. You can't have one person who wants to fly two hours a year, and the next guy wants to fly 400 hours a year. Most pilots, and I'm no exception, have people that inspire them, gave them sort of a love for aviation. And, well, in this case, I've been pretty familiar with Russ and Orland's story for years. You see, Orland's my father-in-law. Obviously, a sense of humor helps. You guess what it costs you to, to own it and operate it, you know, annually, ballpark? We don't really keep track of that. <laughs> <laughs> when, Quite when, scary. <laughs> <laughs> whenever it's time to pay a bill, we just dig in our pockets and pay it, because if we really thought about it, we'd probably sell it. <laughs> No, we, no, we wouldn't. <laughs> You're not we're, agreeing. We're, no, that's the first time. He wouldn't sell it either. <laughs> we would uh, we'd have a great time. We would first continue time. to have a great time. And uh, we're both fortunate to have uh, spouses that are understanding. So be it sharing costs or the cockpit, like formation flying, communication is key. Just when we get ready to take off, my comment to Orland and Orland to me is don't let me screw up you know so it's a uh, and that's it, it may sound flippant but it's we're dead serious it's, it's a serious thing to be right. doing period they're just plain partners Paul Moses AOPA live Orlin and Russ are both longtime AOPA members each year, they fly the show here at Air Venture, and they pick up a commemorative mug. Paul says they display them in the hangar they share back in Ohio. Coming up after the break, good news and bad news for Piper. And party like a pirate in the back 40. AOPA Live from Air Venture continues in a moment. It's been called the most sophisticated single-engine airplane ever. But to the people whose loved ones are alive today, it's called a lifesaver. The Cirrus Airframe Parachute System, only from Cirrus Aircraft. Welcome back. You're watching AOPA Live this week from AirVenture 2015. We're here living aviation with some half a million of our closest friends. And this truly is a great way to experience all that general aviation has to offer. Some high school girls are getting an opportunity to find out if flying is for them, thanks to EAA's Women Soar, You Soar program. The program introduces young ladies to mentors, from engineers to fighter pilots that work in a variety of aviation and aerospace fields. They also get to meet other icons like Gene Kranz. I, I met Gene Kranz yesterday in the Ford building, who was the, who was the mission control at Apollo 13. So that was really cool. And then I got to go on the VIP tour of the Airbus A350, and that was awesome. When you talk to all the other women around you, you realize you're not the only one going on this journey to become either a pilot or anything you really want to be. The four-day workshop includes flight simulation, some wing rib assembly, and of course, a chance for them to meet the women who blazed the trail in mostly men-dominated careers. When you, what was probably the most exciting time for you as a pilot in your lifetime? Well, exciting or satisfied? Well, let's go for satisfied. <laughs> Well, I had my first light night solo in the B-17 at Lockburn Army Air Place. It was probably the most exciting in a, in a quiet way. Um, it was a velvet night, dark night, cold winter night, 
and we're coming around and uh, final. And I just before uh, turning around, I think, oh my goodness, I am a pilot. Uncle Sam let me fly this airplane. <laughs> Talking with the wasp has been um, so inspirational. It's, it's almost difficult to describe. I personally am quite um, a verbose person, and just seeing them leaves me speechless. I've gotten to um, see them and talk with them on four separate occasions, and each time, you know, I get goosebumps just listening to, to their stories. And, it encourages me that, and inspires me, I can do anything that I want to do. The program's 20 mentors also included airline pilots and air traffic controllers. All together, some 56, 56 high school girls participated in the program this year. Piper got some good news at the beginning of this week. Flight Safety Academy signed an agreement to buy 20 Warriors and six Arrows with an option to buy 20 more Warriors next year. Piper boss Simon Codicott says that says good things about the industry. There hasn't been an order of this size for some time and, and hopefully this is just the, the start of things to right. come for general aviation. Right. Um, Boeing announced the, the figures earlier this week uh, where the need for more pilots has grown over the next 10 years from 535 to 588,000. Right. So a 50,000 increase in, in the need. They're going to need equipment and I'm hoping that th this is the, the start of a, you know, a lot right. of good things to come. So. Right. That good news sort of offsets the announcements of layoffs at the company's Vero Beach plant. Caldecott says that's mostly because of the international market. The strong dollar obviously doesn't help, but a number of, of, of countries are, are struggling with their economies. You know, there's parts of Europe we know are having financial issues. That's not helping the European market. South America, Brazil in particular, which has always been a strong market for us, has, has really been uh, struggling as, as an economy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, between the strong US dollar and poor economies in those countries, as well as Asia still, the Chinese market is still not picking it up at the rate I think everybody anticipated, and that sort of slowing down or flattening out, I would say. But there is potential, certainly in Asia, um, but the whole slow pickup is, uh, has impacted us a little bit. But Piper and many other companies believe that the international market for general aviation aircraft will recover. One company looking to occupy a specific niche in the developing world is Mahindra Aerospace in India. They're offering an airplane designed to fill the gap between a Cessna 206 and a caravan. The Airvan 8 manages to carry eight people with only a 300 horsepower engine. The Airvan was designed with bush pilots in mind with a number of unique design considerations. And basically the operators in the bush said, okay, we want a high wing airplane so people can stand under the wing out of the, the, the rain and the sun because no, no facilities out in the bush. They wanted it to be able to taxi through the farm gate, standard farm gate to put an enclosure at night to keep the animals off it, whether it be cattle or buffalo or kangaroos or in Africa lions and things and elephants. The air van serves in a wide variety of roles from surveillance to parachute op operations. Mahindra acquired the air van last year from its Australian developers. AirVenture is a gathering place for airplanes, the public and more importantly aviators. And while there's a lot to learn during the day, there's just as much in the get-togethers after dark. AOPLI's Paul Harrop let his hair down and enjoyed one of them. So we're out here at sunset watching this biplane land, but we've got a saying in aviation that the best part of aviation, it's not the hardware, it's the people. And here at AirVenture, as the sun starts to set, the food and the beverages come out and you get to know your fellow pilots at events like this one behind me. Come on, let's take a look. We are having a blast out here, having a party with our Jolly Roger flags. We are hanging out with my favorite people in the world, airplane people. Uh, what is it about airplane people that make them your favorite people in the world? Because they put up with me talking about airplanes. Oh, and he does. But that's okay. As the food and unspecified beverages flow, everyone on the North 40 becomes a self-certificated expert on whatever comes by. I mean, th this, right? But all bovine biscuits aside, parties like this are a pilot's paradise. Seeing everything fly by is pretty interesting. In addition to the airplane views, there's little pieces of heaven on a paper plate. Tonight, it's smoked pork. <laughs> pork is a wonderful thing. It is a life-changing event when you can eat pork. But if planes and food don't make your red Solo cup overflow, enjoying it with family, blood, or avgas surely will. The best part about coming out here every year even though, you know, I love seeing all these people, but bringing my son out here and letting him see 
and become one of these crazy airplane people. Yep, it's contagious. On the North 40, Paul Hira, AOPA Live. Thanks, Paul. Aviation is just one big extended family after all. And that does it for our second show from AirVenture 2015. Earlier, we mentioned how many airplanes and people attend this event every year. And EAA and the volunteers do a fantastic job taking care of everything. But all those folks do put a strain on the infrastructure, and that has hit us right in the internet. So we apologize that our shows have been slow to post. But we'll have another show soon from AirVenture. We hope you'll join us. Till then, I'm Tom Haynes. And I'm Melissa Rudinger. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.